Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Randomly Mali and another episode of Vlogmas 2020. This is day something. I hope you're keeping count because I'm recording all the videos sort of at once and then I post them in whichever order. So welcome to another episode of Randomly Mali. Welcome to another episode of Vlogmas. If you've been tuning in for every single Vlogmas video, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Today we're going to talk about my first time. Ooh. Okay, before you get all excited and everything, it's just a list of my first time doing different things. So my first time flying, my first time maybe traveling alone, my first time. Um, just a list of firsts really, so don't get too excited about stuff, but also maybe I'll tell you a little something here and there. <laughs> So, um, my first time flying, I don't know actually what to say or which one to consider because I think the first time that I flew, I was two weeks old, which of course I could never ever really remember. Uh, and then even a few times before like your memory starts to actually start working and functioning because I think for me all my childhood memories start from like age five or something. So before even the age of five, there were a few times that I flew. So I don't know if that counts, but the first time that I actually boarded a plane outside of my mother's stomach was at two weeks because I was born in Nairobi. And then my mom says we stayed there. She really just flew to have me and then flew back, you know, as soon as she was cleared to fly. So because the short flight, I guess two weeks was fine. So, you know, I was born there. They looked after me for a while, blah, 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 and everything. Then at two weeks, I came. So still in the spirit of travel, my first time traveling alone, believe it or not, I was almost an adult even, 17 I think, 18, it was 2015, someone count for me, 2015, 20, so I was 19 going on 20, um, because I flew in June, so it was my first time traveling on my own, and also my first time traveling outside of Africa. Which is a damn shame. I should have started with Africa and then gone outside. It was a mess, guys. I missed my flight. I so many things. So I was flying from here to Toronto, Canada. Toronto. That's what they call it. Toronto. And I used British Airways, which is actually a good flight plan, but unfortunately it no longer do flights within Uganda. I left from Kampala to Heathrow. And then I had an eight hour layover and then from Heathrow to the UK, to the UK. Wow, Heathrow is the UK system. Heathrow to Toronto. So it was here to Heathrow was about six hours, it's actually not a long flight. And I had a whole eight hour layover and then from Heathrow to Toronto is like nine hours. So it, for me, that was like the best flight plan ever because this last time I had a 16 hour leg over flight your legs get tired and tired and tired oh my so anyway i had never flown on my own i had actually but that was my first okay let's just make this my first time traveling outside of africa i've just remembered that same year i had even gone to nairobi i think like two months before and i traveled on my own but something about going nearby is easy especially a route that you've done several times before because i've been to nairobi almost every year i think i go to nairobi or to kenya or to you know something so i was familiar with the routes i was familiar with the airports i was familiar generally with the things and it's a 40 minute flight it's quick and easy you get there so there's a clear path where you go like there were no there are no layovers it's a direct flight so i flew fine here i'm familiar with the Ugandan airport i know all our four gates and generally i was okay so from here to heathrow was fine then we get to heathrow and there's an eight hour layover let me tell you guys eight hours have never moved slower in my life i look for things to do because remember this time i was still a student so it's not like i have mad money i just got some money for the trip like emergency money so i'm not really going to be spending i can't go and eat what i want and then buy gifts for the whole world and like generally if i had like enough money to spend i think i would have just shopped till i dropped but you know you have to be careful so i sat i listened to music on my phone then i watched videos on the internet then i downloaded new songs then i window shops a little bit as in generally i really tried to find things to do and tonight was a thing of the first one two hours moved by really slowly then time you start to figure it out 
So anyway, what I remember is that eventually I lost track of time. Like I really found a way to make myself do things. The airport has several floors and stories and who's and what's, right? So at the time that I arrived, usually the gate of your, is it the gate or the terminal? Whichever one is smaller. Terminal, this gate is the gate of your flight is announced, I think, four hours to the flight. So of course, me arriving eight hours before, it had to take me an hour. So it told me to sit in the general area. So that's where I was sitting. So of course, then I got caught up with um, window shopping and keeping myself busy and whatever that I forgot to go back and check on where, you know, which gate I'm supposed to be going to so I could move because I was in the general um, waiting area and the airport is huge. Like there are terminals and gates that are far off. You usually have to take like a bus or take a train or like a something, which I wasn't used to. Like I thought they would announce on the intercom this flight and I'll be able to hear it and like walk over and whatever. Yeah, no. So anyway, long story short, by the time I noticed, when I was like, hmm, I want, isn't it time? I think my flight should be about to take off or should be about to start, you know, pre boarding and whatever. So I thought, because I could see, like, there was a desk where I was, like a customer service desk within my, like, view. And then I could see other gates and checking points. I could see people moving. So I'm like, I think it's probably that one there. Like, I didn't think it would be so fast. So I went and I asked the person, I'm like, hi, um, this is my flight. Heathrow to Toronto, flight number this, blah, 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 whatever. I'd like to know where to board from. And the guy looks at me like, eh, sister. So he's like, um, what time was that flight supposed to set off? And I'm like, oh, what time? But it was due to set off, I think, in the next, like, 30 minutes or something. So in Ugandan time, you know that you can make it. If, even if you arrive at the airport, like, 30 minutes to, like, boarding time or 30 minutes to flight time, you can kind of hack it here our sister our brother it was a whole different story so i get there and he's looking at me like here you be like what up so he checks the flight and he's like uh, it has literally just taken off i'm like yeah, as in they've just taken off pre-boarding or what he said it has taken off like the, the plane has sh i was like oh my god oh my god oh my god so anyway, long story short, I looked at him with like really puppy dog eyes. I was like, and then he's like, what happened? How did you miss your flight? And then I told him the truth. I said, I, I arrived here like eight hours ago. So they told me to sit in a general, you know, waiting area. So I've been sitting in the general waiting area and then just sort of walking around trying to find things to do. So I guess somehow in that mix, I now then lost track of time. So he's like, oh, okay, because usually, if you miss a flight at fault of your own, you have to pay. So he was just like, sister, was it? Then? But anyway, so he looked, said, let me see if there's another flight. He searched, he checked, whatever. He's like, you are in luck. There is a flight which is in an hour from now, and I'm going to put you on that flight. Normally you pay because, you know, it's sort of your fault and everything, but I'm going to let you off this time. I'm going to put you on the flight for free. I was like, hallelujah. See good, see good. Oh, yeah, so good to me. So, yeah, then he told me, This is the terminal, this is the gate. Go now, walk there, go down the stairs, get in the elevator. You're going to get into a subway. Then, I use anyway, generally, I use a train. Reached another area of the airport which I didn't know about, which is where I think the last flight boarded from. So, if I was in this other building, I never would have known because I think the intercom is like the PA system is building wide, not airport wide. If that makes sense. By the way, every time I travel on my own, I miss my flight. What is it? Somewhere, somehow I miss a flight. But anyway. So, I dodged it just like that. I went, I let me tell you where the pre boarding place was. I sat there. Every time I see someone stand up, I'll stand up, look at them. Are we boarding? No, okay. You know, it's in, as in generally. Then eventually, I got tired of that pressure. So, I went up to one of the staff members and I said, Hi kindly alert me when it's time i'm sitting right here very close to the thing and i'm not moving so please alert me so then they alerted me first the priority um people went on and the vip whatever i was the first person in economy to check in like i was the very first person before he called before he looked at me said excuse me come then i went and he said okay it's open and i was like oh thank god so it's good to speak up for yourself friends speak up my first phone it's such a cute story okay it's not really cute cute but 
your Nokia. Do you remember the seasons of Nokia and the times of Nokia? Wow. Um, so I was in P6, I remember. So I was 11, 12, 10. The age, the age matters. It doesn't matter. I was 10 or 11. I was in P6. So I remember it was around the time a few people started getting phones. Some people hadn't. It was, you know, a bit confusing. And then I think my parents were like, man, this chick. I was really doing badly at math. I don't like math. I don't enjoy it. It gives me a hard time. It gives me stress. So I generally avoid it as much as I can. But it actually used to give me a hard time. Like I would struggle to pick up. I would struggle to like just math was generally difficult. So my parents told me, my dad came to me and he said, um, you want a phone? Which teenage child is going to say no? The idea of getting a phone, like which one? So I'm like, yeah. So he said, so let's make a deal. I want you to assert yourself and exert yourself this term at school in math. And when you're done, I mean, if you pass, you, I'm going to give you a phone. You know, at the end of the term, if you pass your mathematics and you get a phone, I was like, let me tell you, I will be top of the class. <laughs> Of course, I didn't make it to top of the class, but I really, really improved by like, I think, two grade points. Um, like, I used to get like 40s and 50s, I think, in math. I don't remember, but I was now like in 70s, which for mathematics, for my standards, was really good. So he could see that, eh, man, this chick has really asserted herself. And he's good at math, so he'd sit with me, we'd go over math together, he just really helped me to teach. He didn't like throw me in the deep end and say, figure it out. So I got, um, I passed math and then, so at the end of the time during the holidays we went to Midco, that cash shop for Nokia phones. So we go there and then we're looking at phones and they start showing me and what I remember, it was Nokia 1600, if I can find a picture I'll paste it on the screen, Nokia 1600 and it was a colored phone and I was the first person in the house to have a colored phone I remember because those were the days of those brick phones, the phones colored screen phone, so usually the phones had a color but one color looks like green or like yellowish kind of thing of course the buttons are what so mine was a bit fancier looking on the screen had a few more colors you know there was like red white black the general spectrum of colors i think so i was i felt so cool i went i had the coolest phone in the house then the snake you know the snake game was a bit more animated it was no longer that brick stick snake it actually had flimsiness like it was like a real snake like it would curve so you turn here then it would it was just so cool and i felt like the coolest chick in life and i really loved that phone i don't remember what happened to it i don't remember where it went i just remember it being my first phone my first drink like an alcoholic drink <laughs> i started early i was 15 16 i was 15 i think i could have even been 14 by the way and i remember every weekend I used to go to uh, we used to go to Garden City and we'd go watch movies. Like for me that was like almost a generic what's it called? Like plan, weekend plan. I'd go to Garden City, we'd watch a movie, what what what. So then we started this habit of watching movies, then after we go to alligators. Sometimes we'd actually skip the movie. I'm sorry, mommy and daddy. Sometimes we lied. But sometimes we'd say we're going for a movie because that was a general thing and they knew we'd go for a movie so it was cool with them allowing us. And then instead of going for a movie, we'd just go to alligators the whole time and have a blast. Alligators was a bowling alley here where they served drinks to underage people. Actually, that happens everywhere in Uganda. I don't know why I'm making it sound like it's a whole thing, but yeah. So we'd go to alligators after the movie and I tasted Smirnoff for the first time. Bro, let me tell you, one thing of Smirnoff knocked me out, not like passed out but I was just I remember there was a buzz in my head that like just so many things were going on I was like oh my god what is going on it was just a strange feeling but I think that was the first time I had a drink and so we do it almost every weekend and then slowly I think when I was in my S4 like during my vacation in S4 actually even in school is when I sort of graduated to spirits so bad and now I just I don't know what possessed me if it was the devil I know uh, but your spirits for me I'm just like mm, no thanks but yes I had started those in S4 but the other ones I started in like S3 actually S4 because still I was 15 in like S4 around thereabouts S3 S4 but I was 15 I know when I started drinking so this 
was 10 years and you know don't have to be old. Anyway, yeah, 10 years ago. My first kiss. <laughs> I was in S2. Okay. My life before Jesus was very interesting. I was in S2, I think, and it was a game of truth or dare. We had stupid things that kids do. It was a game of truth or dare. Um, yeah. Which was, first of all, there were two people playing the game. It was so funny. And then, so we were daring each other. It was like truth or dare, truth or dare, truth or dare. Then this sharp guy it reached his turn then they said he said he asked me truth or dare then i said dare he said i dare you to kiss me then he said okay then i did it so bad oh my god so bad but yeah that was the first one i don't think that now someone is going to dare me to kissing someone because really no but generally that was my first experience <laughs> And I really hope that that's not your first experience. Don't do it. I think for me also why I was sort of hesitant to do it, but then I still ended up doing it. And because I, at back of my mind, I felt the pressure because I was like, uh, people in my class have started kissing. People had stories. What, what, what? They had never kissed a boy. So I was like, actually, and we were, it was during the holiday. I was like, actually, wow. So I'll do this. And then I'm going to go back to school for that time. And I'll be able to have a story and tell them I also kissed pressure is so bad you guys so bad never do it like i think about the number of things i did as a teenager because of pressure or because of wanting to take part in the story and i'm just like <sighs> if you're out there and you're a teenager please i hope you never succumb to the pressure of the people and circles around you if you genuinely don't want to do something don't do it like the reason you do something shouldn't be because you don't have a story doing that thing or because you've you know you sort of you're the only one and you feel left out and left behind life isn't a race it's not a competition don't do it if you're an adult i think still the, the same advice applies you shouldn't be doing things because you feel left out for having not done them it's not a race everyone does things at their own time and it's everything has a time a place a what like you know be by force okay yeah i still have quite a number of things on my list of firsts but would you look at that time is fast spent so we'll do that later if you have a list of firsts you'd like to hear about my first this my first this if i've experienced the first in this you can always put them in the comments comment section and then we'll talk about it from there because remember this is a show for you the people not for me so let's get into that um otherwise this has been another episode of randomly miley we are in vlogmas season this is vlogmas 2020 thank you for watching make sure to subscribe click the bell thing so you turn on post notifications and share this link with a friend please thank you thank you thank you